a few things have happened in the Java industry in the past six months to a year. Uh, one of the things that has happened, for those who missed it, is that Java is no longer free and we're all going to have to do Node.js. <laughs> is everyone happy about this? <laughs> Can someone please bring in security? <laughs> we have some people at the back who need to be evicted. Uh, Node.js isn't all bad, seriously. I mean, I, I love the build tools, the ecosystem, it's, it's, it's great. Um, this is me. Uh, this talk is a very biased talk, and I'm not gonna, not gonna hold back on that. I'm the director of Adopt Open JDK, which is a, an Open JDK binary distribution, and I'm gonna be focusing mainly on that towards the end of the talk, because like I said, I'm biased and I got given 20 minutes, so why not? What I'm gonna cover today, uh, some quick terminology, what happened with Oracle's Java, what options you have going forwards, some of them include paying some people some money, uh, some of them include running away screaming, uh, others involve you actually having to make an informed choice, uh, and I'll, I'll try and help you walk, walk through that. Uh, so on and so forth, and I'm gonna tell you a lot about Adopt Open JDK, because again, I'm biased. So some terminology. There's a lot of confusion about what Java in OpenJDK is, what a Java specification is, what a JSR is, all that sort of stuff, right? So to be very clear, you have Java, the standard edition, okay? This is the specification of Java, right? It's the JVM, it's the core libraries, it's the thing that you've all been using for the past, I don't know, 15, 20 years for some of you. It is defined through the standards body, which is called the Java community process, and you create Java specification requests to make changes to the platform. And this is how Java has been evolved for, for a very, very long time. Um, and so you'll get an umbrella JSR for Java 8, you'll get an umbrella JSR for Java 9, 10, 11, and within that you'll have uh, functional JSRs, so things like when Lambdas came out that had a JSR covering it, the module system, uh, so on and so forth. You have a Java development kit, which we all know what that is. And it's often tested using this thing called the Technical Compatibility Kit, or the TCK. Now to be able to call yourself Java, or to say you have met the Java specification, your distribution must pass the TCK. So it's one of the things that some of you may, may want to look out for if you're gonna choose a new distribution going forwards. OpenJDK. Does anyone here not know what OpenJDK is? Yes, after about 10 years, everyone now knows. Good, so I don't need to go into this, fantastic. So what happened? This happened. <laughs> now, there's a whole bunch of people out there saying, Oracle is evil, Oracle is horrible, yada, yada, yada. Everyone forgets Oracle, like every other big corporation, on the, which is a Fortune 100 company, is there to make a profit, right? They don't create Java out of their own goodwill. Google doesn't create Gmail out of its own goodwill. IBM doesn't create tons and tons of middleware products out of its own goodwill. They will do it to make money. And that's exactly what's happened here, right? So Oracle clearly is looking for ways to monetize Java. They've tried lots of different things. This time around, they're looking to sell you a subscription to Java after the first six months of free updates. So, if you are using Oracle's Java today, and you want to have free updates after six months, you can go to Oracle and you can pay for a subscription to get those updates. This is obviously a significant change to how things have worked for you as an end user and as an end developer for the past 10 to 15 years. But we shouldn't say Oracle's evil, because they're simply doing what any capitalist company is, is there to do. So to, again, to be clear, the Oracle Java that most of you, 99.9% .9 of you have probably been using for all of your careers, okay, you will only now get free updates for that Java for six months. Okay. Java 8, for example, if you're using Oracle's Java 8, if you want to get free updates for Oracle Java 8, you can no longer get free updates for Oracle Java 8. You must go and pay Oracle. Same for Java 11. Okay. There is a lot of devil in the detail behind this. There is a massive document so take a photo or take note of that bit.ly link. Uh, it's about a 20-page document explaining the exact ins and outs of 
when you have the rights to use which version of Java for free or not for free, when the cutover dates are, what's happened to web start and open JFX and, and all these other things. Right, so I won't bore you with all that detail now. So, what are your options? All of a sudden you go to oracle.com and you go to download your Java and you're being told you need to enter a license agreement or a subscription agreement. And you, so you have three choices. All right, which pill do we take? Choice number one. Go on slides, whoops. Don't update, right? Stay on the version that you have. Don't get security updates. Don't get stability updates. Just carry on using your Java in production. It'll be fine. Because Java in the past 15 years has never, ever, ever had a security vulnerability, <laughs> right? Good. Okay, so please do not do this. Option number two. Get an Oracle subscription. You will get the Java from a majority of the contributors who are actually behind Java, right? Oracle by far and away has the most engineers working on Java. They lead almost all of the significant work on Java and they will continue to produce an incredibly high quality binary. You will actually, for the first time in your lives, start paying <laughs> for some of the hard work that, that, that's been driving your careers, right? You've all enjoyed getting Java for free. You've all built careers on Java. Maybe, just maybe this time, it's worth actually giving something a little bit back. The pricing for Oracle <laughs> is actually not terrible. Uh, it's actually as low as, I think, even a couple of dollars per, per JVM for, for desktop, and it's actually pretty reasonable server as well. Okay, so this isn't the case where Oracle's walking up to you and asking you to, to pay them a million dollar check. If you want to go check it, check it out, you can just go to oracle.com slash Java and have a look at Java SE subscriptions. And as a reminder, if you want these two gentlemen and the entire team to continue working on Java, it's maybe not a terrible option. I personally would like to see Brian Gertz finish off value types. <laughs> um, so I might go and actually pay a Java subscription so he gets the salary paid so he goes and finishes the darn thing. That'd be great. Option three, you can choose an OpenJDK provider. So as a reminder, OpenJDK is the reference implementation for the Java SE specification. So to all intents and purposes, if you grab an OpenJDK binary from a provider that you trust, generally speaking, 99.99% .99 of the time, it will just work out of the box like Oracle's Java does, okay? And there'll be some people, and there's, there's arguments back and forth whether that's really, really true in all cases, and there's edge cases, et cetera, but generally speaking, you go and choose a reputable OpenJDK provider, it's pretty much a drop-in replacement, especially if you're working on the server side, okay? If you're one of these crazy people who is still, you know, coding Java desktop application for Windows using Java Web Start or Ice-T Web and things, I'm sorry, it's time to choose a different career. So, what choices do we have? Quite a few. I'm not biased, pick the top one. <laughs> uh, but now there's a whole bunch of options and it's kind of fragmented the market. It's a little bit like the Linux distribution situation, right? So you've got the Linux kernel, but on top of that you've got Canonical, you've got Red Hat, you've got a whole bunch of choices and options. And they all have slightly different value adds uh, and slightly different uh, things that you can pick and choose from them. But underlying all of it, is OpenJDK, or at least the OpenJDK class library, so you as a programmer, when you fire up you know, your class libraries and you're using it in IntelliJ or Eclipse or NetBeans or Visual Studio Code, because Microsoft has also entered the game, um, you'll get the same familiar coding experience. I'll walk through some of these options quickly. So Amazon uh, loudly announced their Amazon's Coretto. If you are an AWS customer, this is not a bad option, they will support you. If you are not an AWS customer, Amazon will tell you to go away. That's about the most polite, polite way of putting it. There is zero actual support there. So just to be very, very clear, if you decide to go with Coretto and you want to pick up the phone and ask Amazon for help, you won't be getting it. Okay, there's no Amazon Prime for fixes here. Azul. Azul is a company who've been producing OpenJDK binaries for a very long time now. They have a strong commercial support behind it. Uh, if you're doing things, especially in the IoT embedded space, et cetera, they're a really good option to go take a look at. So they've been around for a long time. They've put out a really good binary. They're also a for-profit company, so they will try and get you to pay. Bellsoft Liberica, new entrant on the market. Bunch of ex-Oracle engineers have put out their own, their own version. 
Um, given that they're ex-Oracle engineers on the JVM, I'm going to assume it's pretty darn good. You can get OpenJDK from your Linux distributions. But please, 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 this is a case of let the buy beware. Make sure that the OpenJDK package you are getting from your distro is the package you think you're getting. OK? Quite often, some of those distros give you an OpenJDK that hasn't been thoroughly tested, has got the wrong tag level, has got the wrong patch level, or is just plain broken. Right? So you need to be very careful when you pick that one. You can actually get an Oracle, uh, you can actually get an OpenJDK distribution from Oracle. Uh, if you go to jdk.java.net, you can get an OpenJDK distribution from Oracle. Um, they only hold that up there for about six months, though, because, again, they're trying to encourage you to go with the Oracle Java, which is subscription-based. You can also get one from Red Hat and from SAP Machine. But let's talk about the important one. <laughs> so Adopt OpenJDK was a community initiative uh, kind of started by the London Java community and a bunch of other folks like IBM, uh, GoDaddy, Pivotal, uh, actually Azul and Amazon strangely sponsor us, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, and this was really to try and unify as many of the OpenJDK providers as possible and provide a place where people could go and build OpenJDK, test OpenJDK, and do it completely openly and transparently, and then provide a really, really well-tested, professionally tested binary for free uh, so that you could all continue to use Java for free if you cannot afford to pay a commercial provider, which most of you individually can't. Some of your employers might be able to. So, we have OpenJDK 8 and OpenJDK 11, which are the two LTS versions that almost all of you are using. Is anyone here using Java 12? Ooh, yes, go leading edge, people, fantastic. Uh, and you have, you have the options, options here. So let's go to, the, go to the website. We support all of the crazy platforms. There are a bunch of mad, mad volunteers working on this project who went, you know what, we really need Java on Lego Mindstorms. Let's go provide a patch for that. So it's awesome. We have users who are still using Windows X32. 32-bit Windows. Who even does that? It's, it's mental. Um, so whatever platform you might be running Java on, we, we still want to fulfill that right once run just about anywhere crazy uh, philosophy. Uh, most of the major vendors, uh, and I include Oracle, Azul, and, and other, other folks in this, will primarily focus on the main platforms. That's going to drive most of the commercial revenue for them. It kind of makes sense. We will still try and support some of these crazy platforms for you. It's professionally tested. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this later, but we run something like 70,000 to 100,000 open tests on the Adopt OpenJDK binary, all out completely in the open. You can see exactly what we've tested, how we've tested it, and why we've tested it. You've got community support, and there is actually commercial support options. So if you do need to pick up the phone and, and say, I really want to give you money, Adopt, uh, you can do so. And we're already at 29 million downloads. Not bad for a little community project. Everything is open and transparent. The whole thing is open source. Right? You can actually take our infrastructure as code, all of our tests, all of our build scripts. You can take it internally and build your own Java. Yes. You now have the power to have your own Java. You can name it after yourself, and you can go sell it. That's how generous we are being about this. Everything happens on GitHub and Slack in the open, and we have a philosophy that we will upstream all of the patches. So here's a key thing about Adopt OpenJDK. Source code-wise, it is pretty much identical to the upstream OpenJDK project. And any time anyone asks us to fix something, we fix it upstream. So we believe in maintaining the source, that is where all the fixes should go. We don't want fragmentation. We're going to put all of our patches upstream and then take the, take the downloading binary. You also have an extra choice. Most people will use the hotspot VM that comes uh, as part of the OpenJDK project. There is an alternative VM you can use called Eclipse OpenJ9. Some people have found Eclipse OpenJ9 to be more efficient in cloud and container workloads. Again, this is a case of let the buyer beware. You need to test it on your workload. But again, there's an interesting option here that you can go and explore. And again, it's for free. These are all the people who are currently supporting, either through engineering effort or through uh, donations, supporting Adopt OpenJDK. And there are some pretty, pretty big names on here, right? So you see Microsoft, IBM, uh, Sneak. 
they're pretty big these days, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and so it, it's really amazing the amount of vendors and the amount of people that have decided to come behind this community. <coughs> we have people who have admitted that they're actually using us, which is fantastic. So giant cloud companies like Pivotal are using Adopt OpenJDK binaries in production. Fantastic. Downloads. Now, this is, this, is, this is what we found to be really interesting. We do have uh, Adopt OpenJDK on Docker Hub. We have it on Homebrew for, for Brew for Mac installs. And interestingly, you can see here that Java 8 still dominates. Uh, Java 11 is definitely catching up. No one really bothered with Java 9 or Java 10. But Java 12, for some strange reason, is, is deemed to be exciting. We're not really sure why. Uh, if you know why, come tell me afterwards. I'd be very curious to find out. Uh, how it all works, we have a bunch of teams under the Technical Steering Committee, uh, which any of you can come and join. We have, I think, something like about 80 extremely active volunteers and about another 120 to 200 volunteers who commit patches and things to, to the project. So we've got infrastructure, we do everything in Ansible, we've got this gigantic build farm out there in the in, on various clouds. Um, if you're into doing bash scripting work, anyone here like bash? Yes! Come join this project. There is more bash you can shake a stick at. It's fantastic. Um, we have tests. We have like over 100,000 tests, and obviously on a test run, at least 30 of them break. Uh, so if you're into testing, then please come and help us out. We really want to get to green. Uh, we've got website work. So if you are a Node.js developer, that's the place for you. The, the website is actually written in Node.js. Woohoo! Crazy stuff. Uh, so on and so forth. Three minutes left. Brilliant. This is how it works. We go and get OpenJDK from upstream. We pick the branches that we want to build from, which is generally the master branch, or, or the head branch, or the tag that we want to build from. We also build uh, things like Valhalla, Metropolis, Panama, so all of the really interesting sort of thought experiments that are happening upstream at OpenJDK, so the early experiments with value types and things, we produce those binaries as well. Uh, we then build, we then run a ton of tests, it's all on a Jenkins server, Ooh, Jenkins. There's a lot to say about Jenkins. Well, I don't have enough time for that here. Uh, it's, it's been an interesting, ex interesting experiment. And it goes all the way through, and we deploy it through an API and a website and Docker Hub and so on and so forth. I mentioned tests. We have five test pipelines. We run 20,000 functional tests, about 6,600 OpenJDK tests, 25,000 system tests, a whole bunch of external tests. And the external test is a really cool thing. What we do is we take a bunch of Docker containers, we throw in things like Wildfly, Tomcat, Scala, Kotlin, any, any open source project that's related to the JVM. We then throw in our adopt binary, and then we run all of the tests of that open source project and see if, that, uh, see if, see if anything breaks, see if the new adopt OpenJDK binary actually broke anything. And people are just adding more and more of these Docker containers to our pipeline as we go. Um, some of the builds now take up to 48 hours to, to go through the entire test pipeline. It's, it's a significant effort. But it means that, you, that when you get an Adopt OpenJDK binary out the other end, that it is absolutely thoroughly tested, and it's tested on real-world applications, real-world open source projects. And that, that's something that we've not seen out, had done out in the open before. So you have a whole bunch of choices. There is really only one choice, as far as we're concerned. If your employer has a lot of money and is very risk-averse, I do recommend that you take a look at the Oracle subscription uh, and make sure that Brian Gertz and Mark Reinhold and co are here leading Java in 10 years' time and have their salaries paid. Thank you very much. <laughs>